Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today I'm joined by Frank Clay, USS Missouri's curator, and Megan Rathbun, Missouri's former curator who is now the executive director at Battleship Cove. And we are in Missouri's Combat Engagement Center, and we're going to talk about how completely frickin' different it is from New Jersey's. Uh, both ships were modernized at the Long Beach Naval Shipyard. Both ships had roughly the same part of the superstructure, the former uh, flag officer's spaces, converted into a combat engagement center. But because New Jersey was completed four years earlier than Missouri, her space was significantly smaller. On New Jersey, the starboard side of the ship, about uh, just over half of the space, maybe three-fifths, uh, was set up as CEC while the other two-fifths on this side of the room was set up as SSES, which is uh, Ship Signals Exploitation Space. Uh, however, it was found that New Jersey had insufficient command and control spaces. So each of the subsequent Iowas got a slightly larger one, uh, with Iowa a little bit bigger, Missouri almost going the full length, and then Wisconsin basically filling this space uh, side to side. Uh, so it's interesting seeing another Long Beach ship. It's got almost all the same equipment. It's just so much more room to, to work in. So, uh, Frank, can we start in this corner and just talk about what you got? Yeah, sure. So over here in this corner uh, are Tomahawk consoles over here. Uh, during the Persian Gulf War, that's where we launched all of our Tomahawk missiles from. Um, 28 in total. 27 got away. There was one hang fire. Uh, but overall, went well over there too. Uh, these consoles over here are our harpoon consoles. Uh, we only fired one harpoon uh, in practice, never in combat. Yeah, so that's very interesting. On New Jersey, uh, our tomahawks, well, one, we never fired them in combat. Uh, two, they're, they're sort of split up. There's two groups of two on, on completely different bulkheads, just wherever they could fit them. And the harpoons are against the aft bulkhead uh, right by an exterior door. You guys do have an exterior door over there? Yes, there okay. is an exterior door that or heads aft. an interior door heading aft as opposed to the exterior doors here. Yeah, um, our harpoons would be over where you've got the safes there. So that, that is interesting. Uh, what's next in this space, Megan? You've got more radar repeaters. Um, you've got your DRT, your dead reckoning tracer, which is the oldest piece of equipment actually in this space. And then um, when you look on the after bulkhead, as I tested Ryan with earlier, there's one piece of missing equipment there, which is actually a backup Nixie launcher um, for the ship in the 80s. Obviously, the Navy will not let any of these stork ships have a anything to do with Nixie aboard, um, with good reason, but that's where it would have been. Uh, Nixie is a towed passive defense against homing torpedoes um, that you would play out of the aft end of the ship. There are two holes that were cut in there in the former crane space. It's the If you look right below the name on the back of the ships there's two doors there and those are the doors for nixie and there's actually a nixie room at the very very aft of the ship and it's very low clearance you have to almost bend in half to get back there um and they carried they had two on the winches that could go out and then there was a third carried as a spare if they needed it but if you if you needed to use nixie as a battleship you were already like sol so uh, and and we have uh, done a video on nixie before where you can explore that room on new jersey i can't imagine that one's too super different uh it's always unsettling coming on sister ships because the spaces are almost the same, but they're a little bit different. This is over here instead of over there. The color's just a little bit off. Um, the level of lighting is a little bit different. It, it's it's like the Twilight Zone. Uh, exactly. Exactly. It's Twilight Zone up in here. Yeah, so uh, on New Jersey, our aft bulkhead, there's like a, a chart table in the corner and not... Uh, which I guess is sort of analogous to your file cabinet over there. Uh, our air and surface search radars are sort of mixed in among the tomahawks, and uh, our jots and post computers are uh, they're they're against the forward bulkhead over here. So that that is uh, it's all weird. It's all weird. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and as far as I know. New Jersey does not have a Nixie launcher in our CEC. If we do, it's an empty bracket that I've never noticed before. Another major difference is the uh, tactical action officer's chair. On New Jersey, it's 
one of these regular chairs. It's not raised up. But it is still more or less in the center of the room so we can pivot and see everything. And he does still have a quasi-similar uh, set of communication devices in front of him here. Um, what else do we have in the room? So actually over here at our status board, uh, we had a former crew member, OS1, Robert Krasnowski, come on board. And he redid the status board from his time uh, aboard. And this uh, basically recreates the battle group Echo uh, during Operation Earnest Will in 1987. Uh, so it shows uh, the Missouri at the center formation, uh, Ranger ahead of her, and then you know basically supply ships aft. And then on both sides, we got our DDs and FFs, Gs uh, surrounding, basically forming the battle group for that. So. Um, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Krasnowski passed away a few years ago, so we really miss, uh, miss him now that he's passed away. But we have this to kind of continue on from his time on board ship. He also redid some of the status boards, uh, plot boards and status boards back over here as well. Status boards are excellent. Ours, uh, we've tried to recreate, but if we had an expert who served in this space, it would be even better than it is. What else do we have, Megan? So the next piece of equipment we have in here is the SeaWiz consoles over here. Um, so this one is missing some of its equipment from when Missouri was active because as we know the iOS had four SeaWiz aboard. This one can only control two. Um, but this is the station where it would have been with the seat and the console here. Um, and Missouri did have action with her SeaWiz and another ship's SeaWiz during the Gulf War. Um, which we might be doing a video on. We'll see. Yeah, we're, we'll cover that in a separate video. Stay yep. tuned for later in the week. Um, but it's a it's a really neat piece of equipment, and it's very interesting. The Iowa's had four when you look at it, a modern destroyer. Um, they don't have anywhere near the coverage that the Iowa's got. Iowa's essentially had 360-degree coverage from their Sea Whiz, um, which when you think about all the ships around a battleship in uh, a strike group or a battle group, they have coverage, so you really hope that if you've gotten to the point where the ship in the middle is needing to use their Sea Whiz, you've got a problem again, just like Nixie. Which is interesting because our peer adversary, adversaries, the Soviet Union back in the day, uh, and our modern adversaries all have long-range anti-ship cruise missiles. Uh, one of my favorite changes in this space is really an alteration New Jersey got that you guys didn't. Uh, there's still the ladder going up to the flag bridge from here, which would have uh, been here in the original flag space design. And because New Jersey is so small, they had to get rid of this and turn that ladder well up there into a broom locker, uh, whereas you guys still have the, the access. Unlike the other three Iowas, Missouri is the only one that doesn't actually have a flag cabin anymore. Um, it was removed, obviously, to put this space in in the 1980s. Jersey got a ship alt one or crew alt one. Uh, Wisconsin has a beautiful one that is essentially the mirror of the captain's cabin, and it's on the 01 there. Um, Iowa's got one as well, but Missouri never got a flag cabin put back in in the 80s. Um, so there, there are still flag spaces around for... Um, like senior staff, but there aren't, there isn't actually an admiral's cabin anymore aboard here. And in Frank, in fact, Frank's former office um, is actually where it, the admiral's cabin would have been um, if they'd put it in the same place as Jersey and Wisconsin. Another change is on New Jersey. We've got uh, this corner of the room it was later on. It doesn't show up in the blueprints because, again, the admiral's editions are an unauthorized uh, ship alt. But later on, when she gets an admiral assigned in like the 89, 90 time period, they block off part of the already cramped CEC to make it into a like flag space, just a small area with some computers uh, for guys up here to, from the flag staff to monitor what's going on in CEC and report it back down to the admiral below. But one thing that's very similar is the air traffic control station here. New Jersey has it up against this bulkhead, uh, which because ours is shifted all the way to the side, it is an exterior bulkhead, but uh, very similar set of consoles here. Air traffic control here is so an Iowa-class battleship can vector friendly aircraft, primarily carrier-borne, to targets. However, there's some other uh, aircraft control features here. Yeah, so on top of the consoles here, you can see two monitors, and that basically is where the live feed from our drones would be uh, viewable. And, uh, of course, it was uh, UAVs, uh, first time they were used during the Persian Gulf War in 1991. And uh, really interesting story is in late February, both Missouri and the Wisconsin were bombarding the Falakan Islands. 
and uh, Wisconsin's drone went overhead of some Iraqi forces and basically every time a drone came overhead naval gunfire followed and by the time the Wisconsin uh, got its drone overhead uh, the Iraqi forces uh, surrendered and from what we know is the first and as of right now the only instance that we know of uh, military forces surrendering to a UAV in combat. Uh, of course now with the conflict in Ukraine and the, the high usage of drones there, um, that may have changed. Uh, but as far as we know, uh, it was definitely the first instance. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see in the months to come when more information comes out of Ukraine, because like you said, there's tons of drones in operation there. And uh, as of today in mid-September 2022, we've been hearing unconfirmed reports about the Russian front around Kherson uh, collapsing, and there could well be more surrenders to drones or unmanned vehicles out there that will come out in the next couple of days. This is an interesting development in the history of UAV warfare that starts with the Iowa-class battleships. Of course, to get that large CEC, Mazora had to sacrifice their SSCS for signals and exploitation. And uh, this space is not nearly as complete as out there because so much of this classified stuff had to be uh, removed. So which layout do you like better? And whose do you think is better restored and more complete? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals. We really appreciate your support. Consider reaching out and supporting Battleship Missouri, which let us film on board today. There's a link in the description below to their social media and their donate pages. Also, be sure to come out and check the ships out in person. On Battleship New Jersey, CEC is on the regular self-guided tour route, and uh, the restored CEC on Missouri is also on some of their tour routes, so be sure to check their website and see how to gain access. Thanks for watching.